presence as you expand your homestead with basic structures to a fully-fledged retro-futuristic farm. Make your place your own with alternate, alternate, alternative color palettes and decorations. Explore a planet with a past. Venture out into the wilderness to discover this new world's ancient secrets. Team up with your friendly scanner satellite to decipher clues spread across the planet's varied environments and uncover lost knowledge. Farm and explore alone or as a group. While your mech can handle anything the world throws at you, feel free to invite up the three friends to join you in this journey of settling and exploration. Pool your resources to create the perfect exo farm and share the rewarding feeling of a good harvest with your pals. So, yeah, Lightyear Frontier ended up being one of my favorite demos from the game, so I was really excited to show this one to you all first. a small scale building game and a love letter to the feeling of long long 
suspect. 
design games. I've played a couple like this, including a uh, Furnish Master and My Dream Setup. I think it's called. This is another one, another option. It says make miniature dioramas using hundreds of objects. Create a compact kitchen, a comfortable living room, or a cozy nook to read books. The choice is yours. Now, unlike the other couple games I've played, this one seems to give you more like room options. For example, I can see that you can make like a tent, or there's also what looks like a uh, mobile home, kind of like a truck, and you can decorate the back. Maybe that's not a tent, maybe it's just like a triangular wall design, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so there definitely seems to be more options. Now, for some reason, when I launched the game, it was in windowed, and I could not for the life of me figure out how to make it full screen, so the whole thing was really, really small on my PC. Therefore, I really struggled to see the different categories on the left there. I could not figure it out. Uh, so you may see me, like, click on the same things over and over. I think this might be the best one yet of these little room design games. I think I say that every time, that's because they kind of get better and better. This one was way easier to move my furniture around, figure out how to recolor things. I like the kind of clay look to the graphics. Um, that looks like cats in it, which is really cute. It's, uh, I should say, it's um, developed and published by Kenny. Kenny? I don't know if that's like a single person or not. About this game. In Make Room, you can create tiny dioramas. Well, you, I, I feel like I just read this. Well, you create a compact kitchen, a comfortable living room, or a cozy reading nook. Use hundreds of objects and arrange them exactly as you like. Then share a screenshot or video with your friends or family. I don't think that my friends or family would be particularly interested in watching me do this, but, but I had a lot of fun just messing around uh, in the like 10 minutes or so that I played this. I made this really cozy bedroom slash work space. I added a cat. I tried to add some books. At first, I thought that the books didn't fit in the bookshelf. And I was like, that's weird. But then I discovered you can easily size up. You can scale, scale up and scale down items. So I hadn't realized that at first. Plus, there's also different time of day options, which is really fun. And I think that there's only really two available for the demo. The rest are like grayed out, as you can see. So I kind of assumed that it's just because it's a demo, and then you can also kind of do a bit of a weird thing where you like set what what's around it. Like you could say there's grass around here or there's trees. So I went with the trees. That was nice. Um, yeah, I think I just prefer this graphic style the most. And like I said, it was the most intuitive of all the ones I've played. I know you guys always love these kind of games, and I do too. I could get lost in these little creative freeform sandbox games. say the name of it. If you can work out what it is, that's fine, but 
slightly awkward like it doesn't feel amazing it doesn't feel super satisfying but it feels way 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 better I like the art style it's kind of retro like it's kind of kind of cozy it looks a little dated but in, in kind of an endearing sort of way it doesn't the game doesn't look super huge the world doesn't look super big so I'm unclear how much content there will be let me read about this game Mika is an aspiring witch who must embark on a journey to the top of the mountain there the answers to many questions about life and magic await her but also the end of a journey of personal growth and self discovery Mika will have to work for the local delivery company and lend a hand to her new neighbors each new broom will have better features that will allow Mika to and discover new places. If you complete delivery successfully without getting the package wet or breaking it, you'll make your neighbors very happy and fill up your delivery person's card with green slash orange slash red stamps. Take your magic broom and discover all the secrets hidden in the mountain while getting to know its charming inhabitants. Work hard and get a magic broom good enough to achieve your goal. Go to the top of the mountain. Game features. Fly over a beautiful island. Explore a mini open world full of secrets and magic. Protect the packages from the elements as you fly around the island. Play as a little witch who works delivering packages on a small island. Be one with water and wind. Let yourself be carried by its vibrant and colorful landscapes. A cozy light heart story for you to unwind and relax. So yeah, I'd say I'm tentatively excited about this one. Um, you may see me struggling a bit with the controls because like I said, they are all I sort of figured out what I was doing, which is you have to like not touch your stick because you can't use mouse and keyboard, you have to use a controller and you have to just like not touch the left stick and just, just push it forward. There was a froggy chair, I will say, and that was pretty exciting. I think this is, it has to be a direct reference to Animal Crossing, right? Also, this is a two thumbs down. This dog started following me around, but I couldn't in any way pet or interact with the dog. Um, I'll also say that the dialogue is super awkward. I didn't really like it and it was tedious. I just kept wanting to skip through it so I didn't really want to talk to any of the people because I didn't like the dialogue. Um, so yeah, this one right now, as it stands, the demo, it's like a 3 out of 5 for me. Maybe a 2. I, I'm hopeful that maybe it gets better. It's certainly better than another witch delivery game that I played. Maybe not 100% still what I want in a Kiki's delivery service kind of game. So. Magical Delicacy, a wholesome pixel art platformer, cook magical delicacies from a vast collection of ingredients in your own shop. Explore an unfamiliar town and deliver tasty treats to the townsfolk. Learn new ways to traverse, discover secrets, and experience a unique witchy world. So as you can see, we're still on a witch <laughs> theme. And honestly, this might be more of the witchy studio Ghibli game than I wanted than the previous one. Although it's not like flying on around on a broom delivering stuff. You're more of a cooking witch, which is super fun. I mean, cooking games are really really fun. I found the art style of this gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just look at it. I, it, yeah, I'm still such a sucker for beautiful pixel art games, and this one did not disappoint. It's reminding me a lot of Spirit Spiritfarer in the 2D platformer kind of style, you know, where you, it's cozy and you interact with people and all that. Yeah. But with more cooking rather than like the sort of gardening you do in Spirit Spiritfarer about this game. Play the young witch Flora and discover a bustling town in this Metroidvania inspired wholesome cooking game. Cook meals and potions in your customized kitchen by carefully selecting the right ingredients. Navigate the town in casual platforming to meet the townsfolk, take up their orders, and learn about this world of magic. Flora travels 
you'll see that in a bit. Process ingredients into new variants, closely follow recipes, or invent your own creations, and manageable, manage multiple tasks while your meals take some time to cook. Then sell or deliver your potions, meals, teas, and pastries to friends and customers, be it local cuisine or Flora's hometown recipes. Everything to satisfy the taste buds of different folks, from the croquin cabal, I don't know how to pronounce that, to the feline tillin. Then you have a shop. Start with basic equipment and acquire new kitchen tools. Unlock more rooms. To arrange and customize your tools to your liking and maximize efficiency when cooking, put your unused creations up for sale. Sort your ingredients into storage and grow some plants in the backyard. A place to call your own. If there wouldn't be this unwanted roommate and a lingering capitalist dread. <laughs> they say this roommate, but I'm not gonna lie. As soon as I met Hina, who lives here, I was hoping that there's romance. Because it's giving forced proximity. <laughs> right, this just seems like a romance trope. Like, oh no, we have to live together. So I kind of want romance with Hina. Or maybe any other fun characters in the game, I don't know. But let's see if there's romance. I'm gonna keep reading about the about. Visit a beautiful harbor town, a densely packed space of people to meet, history to discover, and many opportunities to improve your business. Meet merchants to buy your ingredients from, or gather them directly within the nooks and crannies of the town. Fun. Meet mysterious travelers, shop owners, forgotten legends, and masters of their crafts, some of which might only appear at day or night. Unravel long forgotten secrets of the island and its mystical creatures. Navigate the town during your deliveries. Climb bell towers and old ramparts, or delve through lost caves. Grow as a witch and acquire upgrades to your movement abilities to discover new routes and hard to reach places or open shortcuts that lead back to your store, inspired by the metroidvania kit genre and condense into a cozy cooking game. Features Unique pixel art style depicting a fantastical town of witches and magic. Befriend a cast of diverse characters that love to order food from you. It just says befriend. It doesn't say romance. Learn an extensive cooking system, allowing for creative choices to fulfill even oddly specific orders. Linear story with many optional encounters and opportunities for open-ended play. Traverse a 2D platformer inspired by Metroidvanias, gain new abilities, reach new areas and unlock shortcuts. Collect new recipes and ingredients through trade, questing, and exploration. Plenty of accessibility features to help you experience the game on your own terms. So how did I feel about the game? I loved it. I absolutely adored it. I love this cookie mechanic. Although, I tried to make mushroom goulash. I thought I was making mushroom goulash. I put in all the ingredients for mushroom goulash. And then I made something else. <laughs> Again, I adore the art. I could sit and play this game forever. It feels good running around in the world, jumping and whatnot. The character design is super cute. I'm intrigued by the little secrets in the world. Um, disappointed that there might not be romance, but maybe there will be. I had a blast playing this, and the dialogue felt way, way, way better in this one than in Mika and the Witch's Mountain. Like, I actually want to talk to the people in this one. I feel feels like real conversations with people that I'm actually interested in and characters I'm interested in. So, as you can see, I made timber goulash rather than mushroom goulash, I guess because the thing that I put in that I thought was mushroom was not mushrooms, but whatever. I delivered it and it was great. I got a reward and whatnot. I, as I went straight to my wish list, I honestly can't wait to play more because I love Spirit Fair. This reminds me of Spirit Fair, but I can't play Spirit Fair because it makes me so sad, so depressed. But this one I could see myself playing so much of. <laughs> Echo 
Let's 
see what it says about me. Story Join Space Alliance as a new captain training and work with your quirky crew to solve the mysteries of an ancient relic found on the gray planet. What mysteries will it uncover? What kind of adventure lies ahead? And who will you meet along the way? It's all up to you now, Captain. Remember to support your crew, follow your heart, and always take care of each other. So you can customize your space. Whether you like to maximize your resource production of machines, or enjoy planting a collection of fresh crops, it's up to you. With tons of machines, decorations, furniture, wall patterns, floor textures, paths, and more, you can customize your living space just the way you like. Expand your living quarters. Configure your deck space. You can even build on the outer hull of the ship itself. Wow. Crafting, farming, and cooking. Craft a range of useful machines and decorations using your workbench. Grow, nurture, and harvest crops right aboard your ship. Then, of course, cook some delicious recipes in your upgraded kitchen. Outer hull blenders. What kind of crops would grow in the vacuum of space? Good question. Befriend your crew. Families, friends, and singles are all singles. Singles are all excited to welcome you to your very own cozy spaceship community. You'll start out with a tight knit crew of twenty aboard your ship. That's decent, but you will be sure to meet many new friends along the way. You'll build relationships through daily dialogues, sharing gifts, story cinematics, mission objectives, and eventually you all get to know each other. Or each one intimately throughout your long journey together. The more you develop these relationships, the more your tiny community will feel like home. Xeno. Hatch and raise a variety of cute little aliens known as Xeno. Give them plenty of love, attention, and food to watch them grow. Restore your ship. Your restoration ray will clean up anything small, but upgrades purchased in the machine shop will help the restore broken or vacant areas aboard your ship. These upgrades will unlock new features, new crew opportunities, and help rebuild your ship community once again. So, speaking of that restoration ray, that is currently my biggest gripe. I'll wait till you see it, but okay, we'll come back to that. Put a pin in it. Explore new worlds. Your spaceship can take you to far away and undiscovered planets. Explore alien worlds and scavenge for a large variety of resources useful for building new machines, upgrading your tools, and completing your missions. Be warned, though, you will no doubt encounter wild alien life forms that are less than friendly on each planet. Keep your cool and give them a zap from your trusty laser blaster. Here we go, romance. Build a friendship, date, and marry one of ten singles aboard the ship, each one with a unique backstory and a wide range of personal likes and dislikes. If you can win their affection and upgrade to a large home, then you can pop the question. Once married, you'll have a lifelong companion to share your quarters with. But can you marry someone that is an android, an alien, or a genetic clone? Yes, yes you can. <laughs> Rank up to full-fledged captain. You'll begin as a captain in training and rise to the ranks as you grow your leadership skills. Mission objective, crew morale, ship improvements, resource production, and micro-research are all factors in becoming a truly great Space Alliance captain. Captain ranks also come with credit bonuses, new machines, decorations, or customizable pieces each time you increase your rank. So, um, here I've been given my jumping out of that to be like, to tell you what I'm doing. So the CPU, who I think is pretty cute, gives me the restoration rate. So unlike all those other farming sim, you know, you have the sickle and you have the watering can, the, the axe and the pickaxe, whatever. I guess this thing just kind of does it all for now. It is super annoying. I don't like this. This is, um, makes me nervous because I really like this game and I love the sound of it. But, I don't know, maybe this can be worked on. It's really loud, first of all. It's just, like, loud and annoying, and I think it just is awkward to use. I also, I realized that it's so zoomed out. Um, you can adjust that in the settings, and I will adjust that at one point, because I'm like, why is, why is everything so tiny? <laughs> it's way tinier than I wanted it to be. That can be fixed. But yeah, I think I just don't love the restoration ray. Maybe you can make it better, like, upgrade it. I don't know. Okay, um, almost done reading about it. <laughs> 
scare the salamander or sneak by and I just couldn't I couldn't do it I tried it twice and even with my higher roll it was like not good enough so so despite you know kind of failing this it just forced me to try something else so I left and I you know worked on just like honing my skills and stuff so I think that's really cool uh, let me finish reading this embark on your quest as one of the paladins the imaginative cook the crafty love dancer the strapping dancer the expressive pyro or the ever charismatic bard united by their passion for happiness each paladin brings their own unique skills to the table and can own their talents further throughout the adventure by making choices and collecting items roll the dice and see where your adventures take you your decisions are not inherently good or bad just creative approaches that lead to interesting outcomes yeah you said that already and you'd rather not play alone paladin sports up to four players either locally or online you can spread your journey over bite-sized sessions so you can explore gatherack and its many secrets at your own pace the story of any given session can change wildly depending on the choices you make each turn so each playthrough brings its own new surprises which I love. I'm, um, I'm honestly really looking forward to trying it later with three, three players. The features, choose your own adventure, bring joy to the people of Gatherack with one to four players, and let your collective choices shape the fate of this unusual world. Be a hero. Play as one of four unique classes, each with its own strengths and weaknesses, and watch your character grow as the story unfolds. Play at your own pace. The story of the paladins can be played in short sessions over the course of the whole campaign. Encounter a dragon. It wouldn't be a fantasy role-playing game without one. <laughs> it's just hilarious. Uh, so yeah, this is paladins. I I have really high hopes for this one because I love tabletop RPGs. is Rusty's Retirement, and it is unlike any game I've played on the channel, in that it just sits at the bottom of your screen so that you can multitask, so the game can constantly run while you, say, listen to music and send messages to friends, or maybe even work, you know, if you can concentrate on your work while you do that. Plant crops produce biofuel and automate a relaxing idle farming simulator that sits at the bottom of your screen while you do other things. Developed and published by Mr. Morse Games. And it's releasing quarter one of this year. So that's pretty soon. So I started playing this one, the demo, yesterday, and I have had so much fun. I've had an absolute blast playing this one. So as you can see, it sits down here at the bottom, and I've even managed to kind of like set it up with my editing software so that it can sit at the bottom while I edit. My editing process is really long because I have to listen to essentially the entire video while constantly stopping and making changes, adjusting volume, cutting parts out, and then, you know, resuming. So whatever the length of the video is, you can imagine the edit time was anywhere between two to three times the length of the video. For example, this will be a very long video to edit. So the fact that I can like check on my little farm while I'm doing that occasionally is just so fun. Or, you know, while I'm listening to a new ASMR video by uh, Jubilee Whispers. <laughs> no point plugging myself, you're already on my channel. So this is the progress that, uh, since I started playing it yesterday, and you can probably see the words demo on the side, so there's only like limited space that you can build your little farm. Those are all the crops I've unlocked so far. Cucumber and beans and um, blueberries, raspberries, pumpkins, melons, potatoes, carrots, I think beets and wheat. And you need to grow, I guess, yeah, grow a certain amount to unlock a new kind. So right now I'm trying to unlock the next one next to the cucumber. 
stress involved, vent your concerns, interact with another real person without any of the anxiety that you may face from doing that in, in real life, you know? So I just, I took a few minutes, I chatted with some people, and then I looked at the different, like, little, um, the, the buildings here, there's like, um, there's all these different things to do, it's, it's so fascinating. I, um, I had it customized to my little, my little friend at first, so I went in and I did fashion, <laughs> customized them, and then I think my favorite part, <laughs> I don't know why, but, um, I liked the recommendations. I guess I personally like recommending stuff to people. Gee, I wonder what, <laughs> do you reckon that's true? I've just spent however many hours I have recommending these games to <laughs> Steam Next Fest is still 